Hey guys, welcome into the Corked Up podcast, a uh, quick edition. Uh, it's just me right now. Uh, Frank is busy doing stuff for Thanksgiving or whatever it is that he's doing. Um, he didn't think it was important enough to talk about this, but I did. Uh, we got some uh, Breaking Bears news. The podcast is up. Um, go check that out. We just wanted to pepper in some some new information that we heard today. Uh According to Hub Arkish on the Bernstein and Rahimi show on 670 The Score earlier today, according to his sources, it was George McCaskey who instructed the team to name Justin Fields the starting quarterback uh, in week five, I believe that was. So I really wanted to get Frank's thoughts on this because I just find it so fascinating that the owner of the team signed off on bringing Matt Nagy back brought Ryan Pace back the squad the collaboration he loved it he loved hearing it obviously he wanted them back for whatever reason they they give him this plan they're like listen we're gonna sign Andy Dalton he's gonna be our QB1 and we're gonna try and draft a quarterback in the first round or the second round and we'll, we'll see how that goes and obviously Justin Fields falls into their lap they're able to trade up uh, to go and get him boom franchise potential franchise rookie quarterback waiting in the wings that was plan A. Plan A was Andy Dalton starting, and Justin Fields is going to sit and learn. That's that's how this is going to go. And <laughs> George McCaskey watched enough Andy Dalton to be like, you know what? Let's go. <laughs> let's let's go with Justin Fields. Like, uh, let's stop playing around. Let's see what he's got. Let's see if you can coach uh, our our rookie quarterback. And it kind of leads me to believe that Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace were using Justin Fields' rookie season as a way to buy themselves more time. Um, you know, maybe going into the season, they were kind of like, all right, you know, we're going to get you Andy Dalton. You know, well, that's fine. You can see, show us what you can do with a, a pro-ready quarterback who, who understands the system, blah, 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 blah. We've heard this all before. And when they were able to get Justin Fields, my guess is they were kind of like hoping that the McCaskies would be like, all right, you got your rookie quarterback, you know, let's, let's, let's give him some time to develop. We obviously don't want to make changes and, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to buy ourselves a little bit more time. And George McCaskey, after seeing what Andy Dalton did was basically seemingly like, all right, listen, we can't keep going with this. Either Andy Dalton or excuse me, either Justin Fields is the guy or he's not. And I want to see if you can develop him and you can show some promise, Matt Nagy. Seems that Ryan Pace has gotten out of this somehow. I, I don't know. I still get this weird feeling like he's going to stay. I don't think he deserves to stay. We talked about that on the podcast yesterday. Go check that out. But to me, it feels like Matt Nagy is is kind of being the scapegoat right now. And it's just so fascinating that the owner was basically like, screw your plan A. We're going to go with my plan. Get, get the rookie playing let's let's see what we got and i think that was enough for him to be like yeah this isn't it this isn't it it's not it man Nagy's not the guy let's let's go ahead and move on from him and uh, while i was debating on whether or not to to talk about this without frank uh another piece of information came through that I, it just it has to be talked about uh from dan pompey uh, according to one of his sources George McCaskey addressed the Bears players and coaches today, so today being Wednesday the 11th, 11-24, after all of this news about him being Matt Nagy being fired, told he's going to be fired uh, after Thursday's game against the Lions, he told the players and coaches today that there was no truth to the report that Matt Nagy will be fired after the game Thursday. What what is going on? What is going on with the Bears? Uh, you had the you had the guy from Patch dot com, the the Pulitzer Prize winning writer. So that lended itself a lot of credence. Uh, who who? It, it's not a guy who's just gonna go out there with one source and be like, hey, eh, I think this is gonna happen. Like he seemed pretty confident that this was going to happen. And from the fact that just the fact that the Bears themselves didn't come out and it really still haven't as an organization come out and said that this is not true. It let a lot of speculation occur 
Now, whether it's going to happen or not, you know, I, I, it, I doubt it will at this point. I think it should. I don't know what Matt Nagy really brings to the table anymore. And regardless of, you know, what it does for, you know, the team or Justin Fields or anything, I think firing him would be the right move in the sense that it just shows some accountability to your fans. Like, hey, we get it. Okay, this is unacceptable. This guy's scoring, you know, this guy's team scoring 16 points a game, two straight losses where they blow the lead in the fourth quarter. You know, obviously Pittsburgh came under some more questionable circumstances. Baltimore, not not so much. Uh, I I just think it shows your fan base, like, listen, we get it. All right, we're 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 on this. You know, we understand the importance of you know optics. We this is unacceptable, and I I think it would be the right move. I just can't see the Bears being smart enough to get out of their own way, and, and I think this proves it. So, so now, all after just letting this sit, you know, we heard the reports that Matt Nagy did talk to the front office on Tuesday, and their meeting was productive. That's what we saw. And players were upset. Players were upset that, that Matt Nagy decided not to necessarily talk about the report with the players. Um, you know, in a report from Brad Biggs, um, you know, it says the embattled coach said a patch.com report that the Bears have told him they would be fi- he would be fired after Thursday's game against Detroit Lions is not accurate. But according to multiple sources, this is from Brad Biggs, he offered little to make players believe that he would be around much longer, leaving at least some players dismayed at the organization's lack of direction. That was before Matt Nagy ca- canceled all meetings scheduled for the rest of Tuesday afternoon and evening. Sources said a highly unusual move that prompted one to one source to wonder if Matt Nagy has resigned to his fate. So again, he's canceling meetings two days before a game. Why? And it's not like it's just one of these things where it's like, oh, well, it's, you know, Thanksgiving's around. Go spend some time with your family. It says it's unusual for him to do that. Why is he canceling meetings two days before a game? And then the next day you're having a source tell Dan Pompey that George McCaskey told everybody that everything's fine. (laughs) Like, like this is what we're talking about. This is what Frank, Frank and I are talking about yesterday in our podcast where the the bears are just so inept and unable to do this job. Well, that it's just going to stay like this until they get out of their own way. The McCaskies have to accept that they're just not good at this. They have to find somebody who can do the football stuff and they can just, Take a step back. Maybe even learn how to do it. There's nothing to say that they can't learn how to do some of this stuff, but they clearly do not know how to do it right now. And uh, a little bit more from the article that Brad Biggs posted yesterday. He said that, quote, he did not shed any light on his status. Sources said, that's Matt Nagy, which led some players angry that he didn't address the report head on less than 48 hours before the team will try to evade a five-game losing streak against the winless Lions 0-9-1 in a nationally televised game. It sets up to be a potential debacle for a franchise that has suffered through more than its share of embarrassments in the last decade. That's that's spot on, right? Like, we know this. This is just the Bears getting in their own way and making just some very, very questionable decisions that other franchises, at least other good franchises, just don't make. I don't know how you let that report sit for so much, for so long, for two days. For two days, it just sat nothing. <laughs> You're letting your fan base go wild. You're hearing the fire naggy chants. Everyone's like, all right, maybe the Bears do get it. Maybe they understand. But like, it's just handled so poorly. And now George McCaskey comes out and tells his players and coaches, like, yeah, no, everything's fine. Everything's cool. We're good. But that doesn't explain why Matt Nagy is canceling meetings and and acting as if he understands it's over. I mean, it, it is over, you know. But it, it does the time frame, will the time frame come true? Is that Lions game it? I mean, if they lose to the 9 and one Lions, that's that's it, right? That's We're done here? I don't get it, man. I just wanted to get this up. Uh, you know, I, I, I know Frank wants to try and give some of his, his thoughts. Um, 
you know, like we said on the podcast, the uh, the episode will not, you know, will not, we're not going to have an immediate reaction to the pod um, for the pod for Bears Lions Thursday because it's Thanksgiving. We're going to be with our families. It's just Andy Dalton's the starting quarterback. Justin Fields isn't even playing, and with that, there's really no reason to talk about the game. Completely honest with you. So probably not going to do an immediate reaction. Um, Frank said he might, maybe if he's feeling a little sauce, depending on how the game goes, if they lose, you know, he may, he may have some thoughts. So keep an eye out for that, but, um, you know, enjoy your, enjoy your Thanksgiving, please have some fun, have some drinks and then just laugh, just laugh at the bears. Cause it's just, there's nothing else to do. Don't really give you a whole lot else. So, uh, we appreciate you guys for listening as always have a happy Thanksgiving and, uh, I'll talk to you next time.